Hello, welcome to my one year special. To celebrate this milestone, this is a Sakuatsu storyline that takes place about a year after Make You Smile and Years Before Space. If you haven't watched those videos, they are two of my other Sakuatsu stories in the same timeline. Though this can be viewed as a standalone, watching those will enhance your experience with this video. If you have watched them, do enjoy the easter eggs, references, and foreshadowing from those videos. That being said, this takes place in the canon Heikaiu time skip, so there will be slight spoilers. Moreover, there is a bit of suggestive language. Also, a friendly warning, this video does contain cursing. As always, I really do hope you enjoy. Now on to the video. In which Atsumu and Sakusa take care of a baby for a day. Hey Siri, play my good day tunes playlist on Spotify. Atsumu smiled contentedly as loud pop music filled the car. He kept one hand steady on the driving wheel while the other drummed against the armrest in time with the song's rhythm. Plastic bags filled with groceries jostled in the back seat, a kind reminder to Atsumu that he had successfully, for once, found all the items he needed at one store. The sun was, per usual, painfully bright, but it was such a beautiful spring day that Atsumu simply pulled down the car sun visor with no complaint. After an intense seven months, the growing V-League season was over. Undoubtedly, the court was Atsumu's second home, a place where he could be his best and feel his best. With that being said, he would not take this downtime for granted. Especially not when he had a boyfriend he could unwind with. Boyfriend. Sakusa Kayumi. Omi-kun. Omi. Omi-omi. Although it had been about a year since he had gotten with Sakusa, Atsumu was still beside himself just thinking about it. How had he gotten Sakusa Kayumi, that quickly, stone cold, good for nothing, albeit undeniably hot, too blunt jerk to go soft at the very touch of his fingertips, turn into putty in his arms. Love Atsumu just as much as Atsumu loved him? Hey Siri, play my Because I'm Fucking Sexy playlist on Spotify. Atsumu bobbed his head slightly as a very different song began to play and hum to himself as he continued to drive home. Atsumu had the entire day planned out. First, he'd make a nice home-cooked meal to share with his boyfriend for lunch. Then, he'd ask Sakusa to re-dye his hair for him, to which Sakusa would most definitely say no, only to be inevitably persuaded by Atsumu's signature doe eyes, pleading tone, and sweet kisses. They'd cuddle on the couch and catch up on shows while Atsumu wore a cute shower cap to wait for his hair to be ready, maybe go for a short bike ride afterward if they were up to it. And in the evening, they could do some exercising. In bed. Even once Atsumu stood at his front door sometime later, arms full of bags as he struggled with the keys, he could only smile inwardly and look forward to his first relaxing day in a long while with his boyfriend. His omi-omi. Finally, he managed to open the door and shuffled inside, shutting it behind him with his foot. Omi, I'm... Atsumu's voice caught in his throat as a familiar sound rang in his ears. A uh, baby crying? Amidst the crying, gentle shushing and quiet it's okay, it's okay s in a low, solemn voice laced with concern could be heard. Sakusa's voice. Atsumu hastily pulled off his shoes and dropped the grocery bags before rushing to the source of the noise. When he found it, in his very own living room, his eyes grew wide, and his mouth went agape. Sakusa was walking slowly around the living area, eyes completely transfixed on the writhing infant he bounced and rocked in his arms. The baby was small, probably only about half a year old, with fairly pale skin, short, curly black hair, and... Why the hell did it look so much like Sakusa? Oh Omi? Atsumu was too busy being shocked by the sight in front of him to even be embarrassed by his stutter. Sakusa's pacing stopped, and, seemingly having heard his name, turned his head to look at Atsumu. Oh, there you are. Sakusa's voice was leveled, as though he weren't holding a wailing lookalike baby whose identity Atsumu hadn't the slightest clue about. Atsumu couldn't help but whisper yell. Omi, why the fuck are you holding a baby? Sakusa scowled and brought a hand up to the side of the baby's face, nudging the baby's head to lay against his chest and effectively covering both of its ears. The gesture surprisingly stopped the crying. Don't curse in front of a baby. Unbelievable. Just as Atsumu was going to reply, Sakusa began to speak. You've never met before, but this is my brother's newish baby, Rike. He and his wife had an emergency to attend to out of town, and he needed someone to watch Rike until they get back, so. Atsumu blinked. Oh. So, this is Rike, eh? He placed a hand on his hip and used the other to wipe fake sweat off his brow. Phew, I thought that was your secret love child or something. Sakusa rolled his eyes, unamused. Why am I not surprised that was your first assumption? Atsumu grinned, though it soon melted as the reality of the situation settled in. That today he would have to play babysitter, just when he had the chance to finally have a day of relaxing quality time with his boyfriend. He practically watches his mental itinerary burst into flames before his eyes, and he visibly deflates. No one else could watch him? No. He couldn't get hold of a babysitter, and other people they could trust were either too far or too busy. He did seem to feel bad asking me, though, since we'd be tired with the volleyball season that just wrapped up. But, he really needed someone, and I know you like kids, so. Despite his current behavior, Atsumu really did like kids. 
Love them. Really. He was the type to stop strangers at grocery stores just to talk to their babies, become friends with random little kids at parks, babysit for his friends if time permitted. Any other day, Sakusa considering Atsumu's love for children as a reason to agree to babysit would have made him bubble over with affection and kiss him stupid. If only it were one of those days. Ah. Sakusa raised an eyebrow. You don't seem very excited to see a baby for once. What's wrong? Atsumu shoved his hands into the pockets of his pants and turned away. Nothing serious. He saw Sakusa frown in the corner of his eye. You had something planned for us today. It wasn't a question, but a statement. Atsumu sighed in resignation and looked back to Sakusa. Yeah, kinda. I don't mean to be an... He glanced at Rike. A hole. Cause obviously, Rike needs someone to watch him. I was looking forward to spending the day with you, that's all. Like, I went to the store to buy stuff to cook one of your favorite meals for lunch and everything, and... Sakusa's gaze softened, and he leaned down to gently rub his nose against Atsumu's. My brother is coming back tomorrow. Just one more day, yeah? Atsumu smiled. Yeah. Atsumu leaned up to kiss Sakusa, but Rike began to squirm and cry between them. Sakusa quickly stepped away from Atsumu and resumed bouncing Rike while pacing around the living room. Atsumu muttered under his breath. Cockbloker. Sakusa shot Atsumu a glare before looking back to Rike. Ugh, and I just got him to stop crying. Atsumu sighed and stepped towards Sakusa with his arms stretched out. All right, let me have him. Just as Sakusa was about to plop Rike into his arms, Atsumu put up his hands. Oh, wait, lem wash my hands first. Atsumu sped to the kitchen to scrub at his hands, then returned to Sakusa, who was looking down at Rike in exasperation. I swear, there's really no limit to how much babies can cry. Atsumu snorted. Yeah, well, that's part of their job, ain't it? Now, come here Rike. Atsumu scooped Rike from Sakusa's arms into his own. Hey hey, it's okay it's okay. He patted Rike's bottom with one hand and used the other to massage the top of his head, placating Rike within a minute. Atsumu turned to Sakusa with a triumphant smile, seeing that his boyfriend's brows were slightly raised. It took me 20 minutes to get him to stop crying before, and it wasn't even intentionally. What can I say Omi-kun? I'm a baby whisperer. And you also calm down when I massage your scalp. Oh whatever. Atsumu laughed. It now, maybe if you start liking kids, they'll start liking you right back. Atsumu looked down at Rike, and he couldn't even stand to feign annoyance at this baby for ruining his dream of a romantic day with his boyfriend. Rike was nothing short of adorable now that he was calm and innocently reaching up to grab Atsumu's hair with pudgy little hands. Atsumu used his index finger to push Rike's fists away, and one of Rike's hands came to wrap around his finger. Atsumu beamed, and he turned to Sakusa with a wide grin on his face. Omi he's so cute. Tell your brother we can watch him at any time. Sakusa shook his head, but there was a small smile on his face. Well that was a complete 180. Well, look at him. Look at that little finger, look at that little face. Ah, I should probably start lunch now though. No need, I'll cook lunch for us. But Omi. But nothing. You bought the ingredients, I'll do the cooking. Besides, I know you want to play with Rike. Okay. Atsumu tilted his head down slightly, and Sakusa sighed before leaning in to press a short kiss to Atsumu's forehead. Baby. Your baby. Gross. But with the way that he was smiling and caressing Atsumu's cheek affectionately, Sakusa's words had no bite. I'll get going to the kitchen now. I've realized that Rike doesn't like noise, so you should take him to our room. All of his things are there anyway. Got it. Let's go, Rike. Atsumu left the living room to bring Rike into his shared room with Sakusa. He tiptoed over the clutter of baby supplies on the floor to get to the bed, then sat in the middle of it while bringing Rike onto his lap. Okay buddy, what do you wanna do? Rike coos the tiniest bit, and Atsumu smiles. Okay, well, what about Peekaboo? Look, look Rike, here I am. Atsumu widened his eyes and smiled down at Rike, who looked at him blankly. And, I'm gone. Atsumu covered his face with both of his hands, then gave it a few moments before he uncovered his face. Peekaboo. Rike only grabbed onto Atsumu's fingers, which was cute, but not at all the reaction Atsumu had been aiming for. Weren't looking that time, huh? Again. Look Rike. Peekaboo. Atsumu repeated the motion a few times to no avail, as Rike had no reaction whatsoever. Tough crowd. All right, let's try tickling. Atsumu began to lightly tickle Rike's sides, and though Rike fell onto his back and gently kicked at Atsumu's arms, he didn't even crack a gummy smile. Atsumu tried singing, dancing, raising him into the air, even sock puppets for Christ's sake. But Rike's demeanor remained calm and unbothered, as if he was that put together when he wasn't even a year old. Such a damn Sakusa. He'd probably prefer a game of chess over this child's play. Just as Atsumu was going to call it quits, he spotted the large, orange fox plushie sitting in the corner of his room. A light bulb went off above his head. Hey, what about this? Atsumu shuffled off the bed and brought Rike up with him. He walked around the bed frame to sit cross-legged beside the plushie with Rike in his lap. Rike, meet Michisura. 
Rikkei's eyes lit up, and he finally gave Atsumu that cute, gummy smile he'd been working for. Rikkei reached out for the plushie, and Atsumu scooted closer to let Rikkei's hands get to it. For his age, Rikkei was surprisingly gentle, stroking the fox's faux fur and only lightly squeezing its cotton-stuffed limbs. And he giggled as he did it, even looking back to Atsumu once in a while to babble something that only Rikkei could understand. Sometime later, Atsumu heard the room door open. He turned to see that Sakusa had poked his head inside. Hey, the foods. Sakusa trailed off as he looked at Atsumu and Rikkei with the fox plushie. He fully opened the door and leaned on its frame. Well, you're letting him play with that? You must have been desperate to keep him entertained. Atsumu narrowed his eyes. You knew he was a tough baby to please and didn't tell me. Sakusa shrugged with a face of indifference, but his eyes showed amusement. Must have slipped my mind. It seems you figured him out though. He didn't get the plushie dirty with drool or anything right. Atsumu smiled. Both he and Sakusa had viewed that plushie as having the sanctity of a shrine from the moment Sakusa bought it for him so long ago. I wouldn't let him play with something you got in Granny's honor if I thought he'd ruin it. He's been real gentle with it actually. Ah, that's good then. Sakusa stepped into the room and knelt down to pick up the baby seat booster on the floor. All right, we don't want the food to get cold. Aye aye. Before Atsumu could get up, Sakusa's voice stopped him. Wait, let me take a photo. Or, Omi Omi's gonna make it his screensaver? It's for my brother. Atsumu only smiled and turned back to Rike. After a minute, Sakusa spoke up. Okay, I took a couple of good ones. Let's go eat. Rike, say bye bye to Michisura. After saying their goodbyes, Atsumu scooped up Rike and followed Sakusa out of the room. The air carried the aroma of ginger and savory fried pork, along with the scents of broccoli and steamed rice. Sakusa was working on fixing Rike's chair booster to the middle of the three seats behind the kitchen island, his eyebrows furrowed in concentration. As Atsumu stepped closer to the kitchen island, he saw that Sakusa had already filled their plates with food and had set a glass of water for each of them. Omi-kun? MHM? Did ya make Shigeaki? Yeah. Hey. But that's one of my favorites, not yours. Sakusa shrugged and reached to squeeze Atsumu's arm, his eyes still on the booster seat. I'd rather it be one of your favorites. Sakusa's sweetness was going to be the death of him. Atsumu didn't open his mouth, unsure and untrusting of what would burst out, and squeezed Sakusa's arm back instead. After a minute, Sakusa stood up straight and looked down at the booster seat warily. What is it? I don't trust it. Why? Looks fine to me. What if he moves around too much and falls? Omi, we're gonna be right next to him. Besides, why would your brother give you the booster seat if it wasn't safe? Sakusa's lips formed a straight line, then he sighed. Just, let me put him in. Atsumu handed over Rike, who instantly grabbed onto Sakusa's hair. Much to Sakusa's clear displeasure, as he frowned a little as he pulled Rike away and got him into the booster seat. Okay, I guess he's fine. Great, now let's eat. I'm starving over here. Atsumu and Sakusa took their seats on either side of Rike. After saying their thanks, they dug into the meal. Omi, this is so freaking good. I should make you cook for me more often. Sakusa raised an eyebrow. You say that like I wouldn't want to cook for you. Atsumu couldn't help but reach over Rike to pinch Sakusa's cheek. Ah, oh, what's gotten into you? Yeah being too cute today Omi. Between you and Rike, my heart can only handle so much. Well, your life must be so hard. It is. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let go of my cheek. Sakusa grimaced as Atsumu released his cheek, and Atsumu rubbed over the new red pinch mark that Sakusa was sporting. Hair, hoops. Sorry. Yeah yeah. They continued to chat as they ate. When he was about done with his plate, Atsumu looked down at Rike and ran a hand through his belly their curls. Do you think Rike might be jealous? Jealous of what? Of us eating in front of him while he's got nothing. Huh? No, he looks fine. Omi, he's eating his fist. Babies just do that, it doesn't mean anything. Alright. So, what do you want to do tomorrow? Um. Can Yuri dye my hair for me? Dot dot dot. Please Omi. With three whole cherries on top. Just as Atsumu was going to put on his big puppy eye act, Rike started to cry. Or, no, what's wrong Rike? Maybe he's not feeling the booster seat? Maybe. Sakusa set down his chopsticks and unfastened the seatbelt of the booster seat. He then lifted Rike up and onto his lap where he began to bounce him on his legs. If anything, Rike began to cry louder. Self-proclaimed baby whisperer, you get him to stop crying. Tisk. Come here buddy. Atsumu stood up and walked over to Sakusa to pick Rike up from his lap. He tried using the same method as earlier, rocking Rike with a hand patting his bottom while the other massaged his scalp. This time however, it didn't work. Maybe he's bored? He's got some teething toys in his bag. I'll go grab them. Sakusa left the room to retrieve Rike's toys, then returned shortly with two teether rings. Sakusa coaxed them into Rike's grasp, but Rike only quieted down to chew on them for a moment before crying again. Uh, what is it? What is it? Maybe he's hungry? My brother brought some bottles of breast milk. They're in the fridge. Atsumu walked around the kitchen island, still rocking Rike in his arms. 
When Atsumu reached the fridge, Rikkei quieted down all of a sudden and perked up. Atsumu smiled. Ah, this is a familiar routine buddy. He looked over his shoulder to stick his tongue out at Sakusa. Told you he was jealous. Oh hush. Atsumu turned back around and opened the fridge to pick up a bottle. He shook it a little in front of Rikkei. Look, it's Mama's milk. Yum. Maybe it's yum. I don't know. I haven't had this stuff since I was about your age. Atsumu, please don't start. Hey, okay. Take him from me while I warm up the bottle. Atsumu heard Sakusa come up beside him and let him lift Rikkei from his arms. I'll be with him on the couch. All right. After about ten minutes, Atsumu walked into the living room with a warm bottle and a piece of cloth in his hands. Your food's here, Rikkei. Atsumu sat down beside Sakusa on the couch and handed Sakusa the bottle and the cloth. What's the towel for? For when you burp him afterward. Ah. Sakusa tossed the cloth over his right shoulder. You don't want to feed him? Nah, it's alright. You should bond with your nephew. Sakusa looked down at Rikkei, who was making grabby hands at the bottle. He sighed and, after a moment, brought the bottle to Rikkei's lips. Rikkei wrapped his hands around it, his eyes closing slightly as he began to drink the milk. He looks milk drunk already. PFFT, he does. It's cute though. Kind of. After 20 minutes, Rikkei seemed done with the bottle, which Atsumu took from his grasp. Sakusa pulled Rikkei up from his lap to lean over his shoulder, then he began to pat Rikkei's back. I've never burped a baby. Is the burp supposed to be loud? It's usually loud enough for you to hear, just listen out. After 15 minutes with no burping, Sakusa pulled Rikkei back a bit and brought their faces close together. Rikkei, you've got to work with me a little here. Just give me one little burp so. Then Rikkei abruptly spits up, some of it landing on Sakusa's chin and most of it ending up in his lap. Atsumu had to stifle a laugh. Oh, well, that happens too sometimes, hey. Atsumu rubbed Rikkei's back, glancing between him and Sakusa, who looked nothing short of mortified. He just threw up on me. Um, well, yes. Sakusa soundlessly handed Rikkei to Atsumu, then stood up and walked to the bathroom to undoubtedly scrub his face raw. Atsumu sighed and looked at Rikkei. Don't mind your uncle. You're a little messy too, buddy. Let's get you cleaned up, all right. Atsumu carried Rikkei to his room to grab a new Onishi from his bag. After changing the Onishi, Atsumu turned off the light and rocked Rikkei in the dark until his head lolled sleepily. He carefully placed Rikkei in the portable bassinet that Sakusa's brother had brought, then tiptoed out the room and closed the door about halfway. He turned around to see Sakusa sitting idly on the couch, tapping away on his phone with a washed face and a new pair of pants. Atsumu walked over to the couch and sat next to Sakusa. Hey there. Sakusa looked up and put his phone in his pocket. Hey. Got him to sleep? Yup, we've got about an hour of free time before he wakes up. Sakusa sighed and squeezed Atsumu's hand. I'm exhausted just from hearing him cry. It's a lot, huh? Yeah, but you're also a lot, and I deal with you all day, so I'll probably adjust quickly enough. Atsumu released Sakusa's hand and softly punched his shoulder. Rude. He then snuggled up against Sakusa's side. Sakusa huffed, but still lazily wrapped an arm around Atsumu's waist. Who were you texting? Motwa. He's trying to rope me into his shenanigans to throw a surprise birthday party for his younger sister. Oh, that sounds sweet. Yeah if it weren't Motwa. He always has a greater motive than he lets on, and I don't want to be there to clean up a mess if he blows a cake up in his sister's face or something. Atsumu laughed. Sounds like Mori Kun all right. You should have seen him when I met up with him the other day. He was telling me his plan for the party, trying to look all innocent while he ate his energy, as if I haven't spent my entire life with the guy to know what kind of pranks he was plotting on his sister. I'm getting too old to put up with his charades. Yeah not too old to put up with my charades though. Um. You're special, I suppose. Atsumu smiled. Oh, you mentioning an injury reminded me. Samu's opening up another branch of an injury Mia in Hyogo next year. Really? Good for him. MHM. And it'll let him visit my parents more often, which is nice. We should go to the opening. If volleyball practice permits. Atsumu hummed and whispered in Sakusa's ear. You can meet my parents. Sakusa moved his head away and made a face at Atsumu. Why would I do that? I'm not ready to marry you yet, and we kind of can't in Japan right now anyway. Atsumu's lip twitched as he tried to suppress a smile. You wanna marry me one day? Sakusa's expression turned into one of embarrassment, and he leaned down to hide his face in the crook of Atsumu's neck. Shut up. Atsumu laughed and tightened his hold on Sakusa. Omi, yeah too painfully straightforward for your own good. Sakusa raised his head from Atsumu's neck. Then I'll start keeping my mouth shut for my own good. Well, you've got a real nasty attitude Hal for the time, so would that really be more of a blessing or a curse? Sakusa narrowed his eyes. Atsumu laughed as he leaned against him, then shifted his weight until he was hovering above Sakusa. Hey there. We've already run through the greetings Atsumu. Ah, then I'll skip to the best part. What are you? Atsumu pressed his lips against Sakusa's in a sweet kiss. Sakusa gave in to the touch, bringing his hand to rest on the nape of Atsumu's neck. Atsumu's hands made their way to Sakusa's curls, making Sakusa hum. 
When Atsumu let his hands roam beneath Sakusa's shirt and swiped his tongue across Sakusa's lower lip, though, Sakusa jumped back from him, leaving Atsumu with a sliver of his tongue sticking out like a gecko. We can't get frisky on baby duty. Atsumu frowned, though he knew Sakusa was right. Still, he couldn't help but grumble cockbloker under his breath. Just curb your libido, Achu. The tips of Sakusa's ears were tinged red, and he was looking away from Atsumu. We'll have plenty of time for that stuff after today. Atsumu smirked as if his own face wasn't heating up. Oh. Don't say anything gross. Atsumu pulled Sakusa close and placed a chaste kiss on his lips. I love you. Why know that? You make it hard to forget. Dot dot dot. Love you too. Want to get a nap in before Rikkei wakes up? Is that okay? I'm a much lighter sleeper than you are. I'll definitely hear him if he wakes up. All right. Atsumu laid back on the couch and pulled Sakusa along with him. He began to run his hands through Sakusa's hair, something that had always helped him fall asleep. Try to get a good rest in Omi. You too. Atsumu waited until he felt Sakusa's breathing even out, then allowed himself to drift off into slumber. See more Nomi, it's not that bad. I can't do it. Can't you just help me out a little here? Achoo, one more whiff of that thing and I'll pass out. Sakusa was standing near the door of their bedroom with a fitted white mask on his face. Had Atsumu been less prideful, he would have asked for one. Before him on his bed lay Rikkei on a changing pad. He was fully awake now, though unfortunately with a diaper that needed changing if the pungent odor coming from him said anything. And here Atsumu thought that the Sakusa shit didn't stink. Rikkei, why do you gotta do this to your unofficial uncle Atsumu? The first day we meet too? Yeah lucky you're cute, I'll let it slide just this once. Atsumu gulped, his fingers edging closer to the buttons of Rikkei's onishi. Atsumu inhaled deeply, then coughed, because he just inhaled whatever toxins Rikkei had dumped into his diaper. After a minute of hesitation, Atsumu finally unbuttoned the onishi. He was hit by the smell of the diaper with full force, the stench nearly making him double over as he gagged. Ah, uh, you okay Achu? No, I'm not okay. What are they feeding you at home Rikkei? Apparently he's started eating solids, so maybe that's why. Omi, I need an N95 mask, not an answer to my rhetorical question. And, my god, it's all over the Onishi too. Atsumu coughed as he pulled the Onishi off Rikkei. Christ, this is what they smelled in the trenches. Blair, let's just clean you up buddy. Atsumu made haste with taking off the diaper and wiping Rikkei down thoroughly. He dropped the hazardous materials into a plastic bag, then grabbed the new diaper he had placed nearby. Not so bad, not so bad. I only gagged once. As he slipped the new diaper under Rikkei, Sakusa cleared his throat. Ah, uh, don't forget the bum bum so he doesn't get a rash. Atsumu slowly turned his head to glower at Sakusa. Dot dot dot. My brother said to make sure to get in the crack. Atsumu huffed and knelt down, mocking his boyfriend under his breath as he rummaged through Rikkei's bag. He emerged with a stick of bum bum and stood back up to face Rikkei. All right, here's yeah, but chat stick. Anyway, I'm almost done with your buddy. After applying the bum and fastening the diaper, Atsumu raised Rikkei up into the air. Woo, that was intense, but we made it out alive buddy. You're all nice and clean now. How's it feel? Rikkei grabbed Atsumu's nose in response. Feels good huh? Atsumu lowered his arms and placed Rikkei on his hip, angling his head slightly towards Sakusa. Can you take Rikkei from me? I need to clean up this. Danger zone. Unless you'd be so kind as to do that for me. Sakusa's eyes widened, then he rushed over to Atsumu, plucked Rikkei from his arms, and sped out of the room at the speed of light. Atsumu chuckled under his breath and turned around to clean up. A little while later, he strolled into the kitchen to find Sakusa chewing on an apple while he fed Rikkei what looked like some kind of puree. Ooh, snack time? Sakusa looked up. Guess so. I pulled out some Greek yogurt for you and cut up a banana. Ah, yes. Preparing food, one of Sakusa's favorite methods of apologizing. Thanks, but... Atsumu brought a hand to his stomach and smiled queasily down at Rikkei. After changing that diaper, I've got no appetite. Sakusa opened his mouth, then quickly shut it. Atsumu stared at Sakusa, encouraging him to speak. Dot dot dot. Sorry I didn't help. Sakusa grunted, as though having to verbalize his apology was a sign of defeat. Atsumu grinned. It's fine Omi, you would've if you knew you could handle it. You're so delicate, you'd probably faint at the sight of it really. HMPH. Sakusa bit down aggressively on his apple, making Atsumu laugh a bit as he knelt beside Rikkei's booster seat. Atsumu watched as Rikkei tried wiping away the puree that had gotten onto his face, only smearing it more. Or, oh, you are so messy. There was no point in even putting a bib on him, he still managed to get it all over himself. My brother did say that today's his bathing day, so I guess we can just give him a bath now. Atsumu's eyes sparkled. Ooh, we should all bathe together. Absolutely not. Hey, why not? That tub is barely big enough for one of us, and you want us to both get in there with a baby? Ugh, fine. Well, then you should get in the bath with him. Why not you? I changed his diaper, the least you could do is bathe him. Achoo, we both know that you'll be there to help anyway. 
Details details. Why does either of us even need to be in the bath? Because Omi, skin to skin. You just think it's a cute idea and want to get a picture. That's just an added bonus. But what if he pees on me? Really? After that nuclear weapon he dropped into his diaper earlier, that's your biggest concern? You're making me want to say no. Don't be like that. Okay, fine. Sakusa sighed as he stood up. I'll go get the bath ready. Can you make sure he finishes eating? Sakusa glanced down at Rike, who was unsuccessfully trying to get a spoonful of curry into his mouth. To the best of his abilities. Atsumu puffed out a laugh and sat beside Rike. Course I can. Now shoo. Atsumu waved off Sakusa, who rolled his eyes and headed to the bathroom. Atsumu turned back to Rike and picked up the messy spoon, trying not to cringe as he did so. Okay, here comes the airplane. Atsumu made dramatic airplane noises and waved the spoon around in the air. Preparing for landing. Atsumu brought the spoon down to Rike's closed lips. Hey, this is your cute open up buddy. Rike blinked, then promptly opened his mouth to eat from the spoon. Yay. Atsumu pumped a fist into the air, and Rike copied the motion. Oh my gosh yeah too cute. Rike babbled as Atsumu wiped the food from the sides of his mouth. MHM, I get what you mean. Okay, let's hurry up so that you can take a bath with Uncle Omi. This time, a train's coming. Several minutes later, Atsumu carried a very messy Rike into the bathroom. Sakusa was already in the tub, leaning with his back against it while glistening muscled thighs popped out from under the surface. He was surrounded by bubbles alongside the rubber ducks and submarine floating around him. Atsumu giggled as he sat Rike down on the sink counter. Um? Oh, nothing. As Atsumu turned on the sink force it to wipe Rike's face off, he cast a glance towards Sakusa, only to start giggling again. What's funny? Seeing your bulky self in a bubble bath is kinda funny. Sakusa scoffed. As if you don't take bubble baths late at night while watching Netflix when you think I'm asleep. Atsumu gasped. How did you know? You can't keep secrets from me at you. Also, your shows are loud sometimes. HMPH. I'm sure you'll do it too. Probably using my bottle. You used it to make the water all bubbly just now, huh? Don't flatter yourself, my brother happened to pack a bottle. Besides, yours is coconut scented. But you already know that, don't you? Atsumu sputtered. Why, you? Don't keep me waiting at you, bring over Rike. Atsumu could hear the smugness in his boyfriend's voice. He kept his mouth shut, though, as he walked over with Rike and passed him over to Sakusa. Atsumu sat down on a small stool beside the tub as Sakusa settled Rike onto him and grabbed a washcloth. Want me to wash your hair? Sure. Atsumu reached for the shampoo and uncapped the bottle, pouring a generous amount into his hands before he began to massage it into Sakusa's scalp. Promise me you won't tell anyone about my bubble baths. Sakusa caused his gentle scrubbing of Rike's face to tilt his head. Dunno, it might come up during a drunken conversation when we go out to the bar with the team one day. You wouldn't dare. If I find out you told anyone, I'll tell them you watch cute dog compilations on YouTube. Sakusa froze. Wah, how did you? Yeah not as slick as you think babe. You. Rike whimpered quietly, making Atsumu and Sakusa snap their heads toward him. Or, are we not paying attention to you? Rike whined a little in response. I know, Atsumu makes me want to cry too sometimes. Excuse me? What is it? Is he talking too much? Sakusa booped Rike's nose, leaving a dollop of soap there. Rike grabbed his own tiny handful of soap and stretched his chubby arm up. Once he placed it on Sakusa's nose, he leaned back and laughed at his work. Um, thanks for the new nose. Sakusa scratched the back of Rike's ear, making Rike giggle. So that's where he was ticklish. Rike was looking up at Sakusa with that winner toothless grin, and Sakusa smiled right back at him. And, Atsumu swore he saw a twinkle in Sakusa's eyes. After that, it was as if Atsumu had disappeared. Sakusa started to talk and play with Rike in a way that Atsumu had never seen him interact with a baby before. Sakusa gave himself and Rike new heads of spiky soap hair and told Rike the story of the three little ducks with the rubber ducks in the tub. He made the submarine fly and dropped it back down into the water so that it'd splash. He sprinkled water over Rike's head to make him squeal and tickled him all over and reciprocated Rike's hug when he leaned on Sakusa's chest. He even let Rike pull at his hair without a fuss, for goodness sake. Atsumu just smiled the entire time, perfectly content with only watching, and sneaking photos when he could. Sakusa only turned back to Atsumu when the bath was done to hand Rike to him. Atsumu wrapped Rike up in a towel and cradled him while Sakusa stepped out of the bath to unplug the drain. Thought I became a ghost or something with the way you guys forgot about me. Oh. You could have left. I'm just playing with you. I liked seeing you two be all cute. Um. Sakusa grabbed a towel and dried himself before wrapping it about his waist. All right, let me have Rike. Before Atsumu could register the sentence, Sakusa had taken Rike from his arms and headed off to the bedroom. Atsumu quickly caught up and stepped into the bedroom, seeing that Sakusa was holding Rike close to his chest as he opened the closet. Atsumu smiled and walked over to stand next to Sakusa. What do you need from the closet? The clothes I got for Rike are in here. Clothes? Why do you have clothes for Rike? 
And, why did I never notice that there's baby clothes in our closet? It was our baby shower gift, remember? You got sick and I stayed home to be with you, so neither of us ended up going. Oh yeah. Sakusa gestured for Atsumu to take Rike, which freed up both of his hands to search the closet. Atsumu adjusted his arms so that Rike could sit on them and lean back onto Atsumu's chest, allowing them both to watch Sakusa. Soon, Sakusa pulled out two hangers, one with mustard yellow overalls and a white t-shirt, the other with a green dinosaur onishi. Oh, look at the onishi. But I really like the color on those overalls. Yeah, we could tell from your high school hair job. Hey. Okay Rike, which one do you want to wear? When Rike reached out for the overall set, Atsumu smirked. See? Rike also appreciates the color. He only did that to appease you. You'll eat your words, Omi. And he did eat his words. After dressing Rike, Sakusa begrudgingly admitted that the color looked good on him. Sakusa spent about 10 minutes taking photos of Rike to send to his brother after that. They watched a National Geographic Marine Life documentary afterward, with Sakusa pointing out all the recognizable animals to Rike. More than anything, Rike seemed simply amazed by what he was seeing on screen. Atsumu and Sakusa played any game that came to mind with Rike, and when it got closer to his time to sleep, they switched to reading bedtime stories until Rike began to sway from side to side in Sakusa's lap. This time, it was Sakusa that carried Rike to his bassinet. Atsumu didn't miss it when Sakusa kissed the top of Rike's head as he set him down. They walked back to the couch together and dropped themselves onto it with heavy sighs. Gee, it's only been a few hours with him and I'm already beat. I can't imagine how parents do this all day with one kid, let alone multiple. Me neither. I'm really craving some Ikeaki right about now. Well, that's random. Hey, well, I was thinking about how long it's been since we've been on a date, then I started thinking about our first date and how you bought us Ikeaki. Achoo, that wasn't a date. You say that every time, and I'm still not buying it. But it's true. You basically confessed your undying love for me. As if you weren't stuttering and blushing all over the place. Yeah talking about yourself. And I'm not the one who got all shy when we held hands at the ice rink. What? You were. Shh. Atsumu wrapped his arms around Sakusa and leaned on his side. Rike is a real good baby. He is. Definitely more pleasant than some of my other nieces and nephews at that age. You were probably mean to them and they were mean right back at you, Omi. You got real sweet with Rike though. Had a moment in the bathtub and all. I guess I did. Click with him. Finally starting to like kids? I don't think so. Um, say that when I catch you watching cute baby compilation videos next. You. Atsumu giggled. They sat quietly for a few minutes before Sakusa cleared his throat. Do you, want to have kids? I do. Is that surprising? Kind of. I know you like kids, but your heart kind of seems to only beat for volleyball. Hey, there's a little spot in there for you too. And, yeah, even after my last game, I'll never stop chasing after volleyball. Still, I have other things I wanna chase after in the future too. Like settling down, having kids, why no? I wanna have a baby girl named Mitsuko that looks just like me. Well that got oddly specific. Yeah, I've thought about it. I can see that. And, why Mitsuko? Isn't that the name of that fox plushie? Omi, how dare you? What? That fox's name is Mitsura, which is my mama's name, you should know this. Mitsuko was my granny's name. Ah. You probably have your life all planned out for the six decades following year retiring from volleyball. Sakusa looked ready to say something snide, but as Atsumu gazed deeply into his eyes, Sakusa closed his mouth. I'm guessing you don't want kids? Sakusa broke from his gaze. Not particularly, no. I've never been fond of kids, so they've never been part of my plan for the future. Though, Sakusa paused to glance back at Atsumu. I've found that when the right person or opportunity comes along, I've had to amend my plans. Atsumu smiled, immediately reading between the lines. Sakusa didn't believe in destiny. Each day, he worked meticulously to reach his goals. Still, there were aspects of his life that he could only attribute to chance and simple good fortune. There was no way that the chaos that was Mia Atsumu could have ever quite been a part of Sakusa's plan. And who was to tell which of Atsumu's dreams wouldn't become Sakusa's dreams as well? Atsumu's heart swelled, and he leaned up to pour it into a kiss to Sakusa's temple. Remember what I said earlier. Tell your brother we can babysit Rike at any time. You say that now, but you'll probably take it back when he wakes up crying the second we fall asleep. Maybe, but I liked having him around today. Just going to surround yourself with other people's babies until you can have one of your own, Achoo. Atsumu smiled. Yeah, one of my own.